In all likelihood, Donald Trump will be the Republican nominee when our party convention meets in July. I congratulate him and wish him well. I wish anyone well who would be America's president. Our country is too precious to let our differences divide us. I have always been a conservative Republican and always supported the Republican nominee. But on this question, as she did on so many others, Margaret Thatcher provided some good advice when she said, quote, never just follow the crowd, always make up your own mind. It is now up to Donald Trump to earn the votes of those in our party and beyond it who did not support him. And I hope he does that. This is my video update on this Wednesday, midday, March the 6th. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with Super Tuesday, oh, Super Tuesday and a big night for Trump. Uh, the last I, I read, Trump uh, came out on Super Tuesday with 985 delegates to Nikki Haley's 88 delegates. So uh, it's, it's over for Nikki Haley, at least as, uh, as a candidate for the Republican Party. It is game over, game over, man, game over, game over, Nikki Haley. Uh, she'll run as an independent, maybe, maybe she'll run as an independent. If there is money there, I am sure she will uh, run as an independent. So uh, Biden, he also had, uh, had a big night for uh, Super Tuesday, and uh, Biden, Biden ran into some trouble in... Minnesota. He won Minnesota with like 80% of the, of the vote. Not that anyone is really opposing Biden, but uh, you know who came in second? Uncommitted. Uncommitted got 20% of the vote in Minnesota. And uh, this uncommitted vote was a protest vote for Biden's policy towards, uh, towards Gaza, towards the war in uh, Gaza and uh, Israel. And so uh, Minnesota came out and they voted 20% uncommitted. So that's got to, uh, that's got to worry the Biden campaign. So that was Super Tuesday, big night for Trump. Uh, no big surprises for Biden. A uh, warning sign in, uh, in Minnesota, warning signs as well for the Biden campaign in Michigan. And uh, Nikki Haley, well, I want her to uh, to stay in the race because I think she's the she's the one person right now that can challenge Annalena Baerbach. But uh, I don't know. I think she's going to, to call it quits. I think she's going to announce that she is dropping out of the race for the Republican nomination, and she just may well run as an independent. So let's now talk about Victoria Newland. Victoria Newland's resignation. Very, very big news that kind of came out of nowhere yesterday afternoon. Uh, afternoon, my time. Victoria Newland, the person that, that gave birth to Project Ukraine, the mama of Project Ukraine announced that she will be resigning. This was her decision, according to Antony Blinken. So the Alensky curse, the Alensky curse has, uh, has managed to take out a very, very big, big fish in, uh, in the geopolitical game, Victoria Newland will be resigning. I imagine she's going to join a DC think tank. Maybe she'll join the Institute for the Study of War, where her her sister-in-law, I believe, heads up that uh, that organization. But um, 
as far as the Department of State is concerned, Victoria Newland is gone. But I think that Victoria Newland is a lot more comfortable working in the shadows and working behind the scenes. And she will most likely, I imagine, she will most likely be moving over to one of the DC think tanks. And, you know, it is those think tanks that do create a lot of the foreign policy for the United States. So she's, uh, she's not in government, but she still will be influencing much of U.S. foreign policy, unfortunately. But um, the Alensky curse, the Alensky curse has taken out Victoria Newland, just a girl, just a girl with a dream, a small town girl with a dream to make it to the top of the U.S. government and to overthrow the Putin and to take over Russia and balkanize Russia. Just a girl, a small town girl with a simple dream small town girl living in this lonely world she took the midnight train going anywhere and now it looks like victoria newland is going to have to stop believing it's time to stop believing victoria newland so uh i'm gonna have to retire that that skit the don't stop believing skit i liked that one I really like that one. I first introduced that skit in February of 2023 when I was in Athens. And it just came to me. I was thinking, she's a small town girl, that Victoria Newland. And she wants to destroy the Russian Federation. Just a small town girl living in this lonely world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Just a small town boy born and raised in South Detroit. She took the midnight train going anywhere, Mr. Robert Kagan. And together they're going to join some DC think tank. So let's, uh, let's talk about her temporary replacement. Her temporary replacement will be John Bass. Let me read you a tweet, a tweet from Aaron Mate. Victoria Newland's replacement as Deputy Secretary of State is John Bass, a former ambassador to Afghanistan who oversaw the U.S. withdrawal from the country. Like Newland, he's also a former aide to Dick Cheney. Really inspires confidence. Yep. Another Dick Cheney former aide who, uh, who is running foreign policy in the Biden administration in the permanent state. Dick Cheney has a lot of his, uh, his aides, his minions scattered around the, uh, the D.C. permanent state deciding foreign policy. But uh, interesting, huh? John Bass, the former ambassador to Afghanistan who oversaw the U.S. US withdrawal from Afghanistan. He oversaw the debacle that was Afghanistan. And now he is going to take over for Victoria Newland and take over Project Ukraine. Wow, <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. The guy that oversaw the debacle in Afghanistan, the withdrawal of the United States from Afghanistan is going to be taking over Project Ukraine. I wonder... I wonder what the U.S. is going to do with Project Ukraine. If I was Alensky and if I was the European Union, I would be very, 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 very worried right about now. Remember Afghanistan? Remember that debacle? One day the United States had, uh, had a couple of bases in Afghanistan, a ton of weapons, and they were tra training the, uh, the military in, uh, in Afghanistan to fight the Taliban. And Biden gave an interview and he said that the, ta that, uh, the Afghan government has something like 300,000 uh, U.S. trained soldiers. And they're going to, to demolish the Taliban. And one week later, not even one week, like two, three days later, everything was gone. Poof. 
like Kaiser Sose, poof, just disappeared. The entire U.S. military, the entire operation disappeared. And then, of course, we had the images of, of the planes and, and uh, people hanging off of the planes. And I think it was the, the president of Afghanistan or the prime minister of Afghanistan fled the country and went to, I don't know, Qatar or the UAE. And he had like suitcases of money and money was dropping out of his, uh, his suitcase as he was fleeing the country. And now this guy <laughs> or that guy, that guy that was running the show in Afghanistan, Mr. Baz is going to be running the show in Project Ukraine. But according to the Associated Press, he is the temporary uh, replacement for, uh, for Newland. So maybe they're going to find someone else to take over for uh, Newland. And let's see what Zero Hedge has to say about the retirement, the resignation of uh, Victoria Newland. They have an article with the title, Victoria Newland leaving post while Ukraine on the ropes. U.S. policy in shambles. In shambles. In tatters. In tatters, I tell you. It's in tatters. Her boss, Newland's boss, Anthony Blinkett, said something a bit ironic on the occasion of unveiling her departure. Quote, but it's Toria's leadership on Ukraine that diplomats and students of foreign policy will study for years to come. Indeed, many already know her as Victoria F. the EU Newland and for essentially running policy in Europe, stretching back through the Obama years as then assistant secretary of state for Europe, where many of the problems which sparked the disastrous and tragic Russia-Ukraine war were first set in motion. According to more praise from Secretary Blinken, her efforts have been indispensable to confronting Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, marshalling a global coalition to ensure his strategic failure and ensuring Ukraine work toward the day when it will be able to stand strongly on its own feet democratically, economically, and militarily. Yeah, Blinken's delusional. <laughs> Blinken is absolutely de delusional in this statement. <laughs> People are going to be studying Victoria Newland. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, they will be studying Victoria Newland, but not for the reasons that uh, Blinken is, is saying in his statement. And then he talks about Putin's full scale invasion. You always have to say full scale invasion, you can't say invasion. You can't say small invasion. You can't say medium invasion. You can't say big invasion. You can't say gigantic invasion. It has to be full scale invasion. You have to put full scale in front of invasion. So you always have to say full scale invasion. Oh boy, he talks about uh, uh, building a global coalition. Yeah, how's how's that worked out for you, uh, Blinken and? And Newland, how has Newland's strategy of building a global coalition worked out? Not so good. And what else did uh, Blinken say in his statements? Ah, uh, yes, Newland has ensured Putin's strategic failure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's he's really failing. All right, <laughs> that Putin, that Russia, that Russia with its four, five, six percent growth is really, really failing. If that's failing, I don't, I don't know what, what success. I wonder what success looks like. If, if this is Russia failing, <laughs> what does success look like? I, I would like some of that, uh, that Russia failing. <laughs> that seems to be uh, pr pretty good stuff there, that Russia failing. Anyway, uh, yeah, so last week, uh, Newland was on CNN speaking with Christian Amonpour, a very... Very sophisticated journalist and international correspondent, Christian Amanpour. And uh, Newland told Christian Amanpour that the U.S. is tightening the noose around Putin. That is what she told Amanpour. International correspondent and sophisticated journalist, we are tightening the noose around Putin, she said. That was just last week. And also last week, she uh, gave... Uh, a speech, an interview 
to the DC think tank CSIS. And in that, uh, that interview, in that appearance to the CSIS, CSI Miami, CSI Las Vegas, Newland said that nasty surprises await Russia. That was just last week. Nasty surprises await Russia. And at that same event, Newland said that the strategy for Ukraine is going to be an asymmetric war, an insurgency type of war. She said asymmetric war. That's the plan going forward for Ukraine. And then last month or about two months ago, actually December, I believe, the end of December, was it the end of December or was it January? Doesn't matter. Uh, Newland was in Kiev and uh, she was speaking to the media outside in the cold in Kiev, a very weird place for uh, a press conference. But Newland said that nice surprises await Russia. I believe she, she used the word nice at the CSIS event last week. She used the word nasty surprises. And I believe in Kiev, she said, nice surprises await Putin. Is this a nice surprise that you're resigning? <laughs> it's a pretty nice surprise. <laughs> so there's a story that, uh, that Lavrov told one-time Secretary of State Kerry when, uh, when they were meeting. It was, it was announced that Newland was, was leaving her post at the State Department under Kerry, the position that she had under Kerry. And Lavrov was meeting with Kerry, and he was like, uh, God, thank God, uh, Mr. Kerry, John Kerry, that, that you're getting rid of that, that awful woman. That's what Lavrov told Kerry, and Kerry's reply to Lavrov was, um, I'm not getting rid of her, um, I'm actually promoting her. <laughs> just, just gives you an idea of, of uh, how things work in the swamp. But uh, yeah, so, you know, last week... She was saying that the noose is tightening around Putin. She was saying that uh, nasty surprises await Russia, that uh, the plan for Project Ukraine is asymmetric war, insurgency type of war. And, uh, and a month or two months ago, she was actually in Kiev. And uh, she said nice surprises await Russia. And when she was in Kiev, that was at the time when uh, there was this fight the big fight between Alensky and Zeluzhny. And that is why Newland went to Kiev because she saw that things were breaking down and kind of spur of the moment, she got on a plane. She took the midnight plane going anywhere and she landed in Kiev and uh, she resolved the, the fight between Alensky and Zeluzhny. Zeluzhny was out and, and that was it. And Sirsky came in and they purged or they're purging the military now of any of, uh, of Zeluzhny's supporters. But that was just like a month and a half ago, two months ago. So uh, there are many analysts who believe that this abrupt departure of Newland has to do with a House investigation that is about to take place or is, or is taking place, where they're investigating something like 10 billion uh, dollars in funds that went to Project Ukraine from 2014, and and this money was given to Project Ukraine, and Newland was overseeing that money, and no one knows where this money went. Anyway, there are people who are speculating that that uh, this is the reason for Newland's departure. There are other analysts who say her departure is connected to to the trajectory in the U.S. elections, which is that uh, that Trump is is looking like he is going to to win in November of 2024. We still have a long way to go and a lot can happen, but things don't look good for Biden. Things are looking very good for, uh, for the Trump campaign. And Newland is seeing the writing on the wall and she's saying it's time to, to get out. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm happy that Newland's resigning, but I'm also a bit uh, angry, disappointed because... You know, Newland's jumping ship, and uh, she's she's the one person that is perhaps the person that is most responsible with the debacle in uh, Ukraine. And so, as Ukraine collapses, she's uh, she's bolted. She's going to be nowhere nowhere to be found. So that 
people can look at Newland and say, look at what you did. She, she's not going to be anywhere. She'll be in some corner office at a think tank. And, and uh, as, as Ukraine gets the Afghanistan treatment, Newland's going to be MIA. So, you know, she's not going to be there to, to accept the, the responsibility and the accountability for the debacle and the suffering and the death and the destruction that uh, her project Ukraine has caused. But, uh, but look, she's, she's gone. So those are some of the reasons as to why she decided to resign. But uh, my own opinion is that, yes, this is probably connected to, to the elections. Yes, this is probably connected to this investigation of uh, funds. But I also think this is connected to to the audio leak, the Crimea Bridge, Germany audio leak. And I think that when Newland was talking about nasty surprises and nice surprises, knowing how fixated Newland is or was on Crimea, I believe that the big surprise was uh, the, the blowing up of the Kerch Bridge. And once this audio leak came out and was, uh, was revealed, I think that Newland said, you know, there's no reason to, to be heading up Project Ukraine anymore. Everything is collapsing. And, and the one thing that I was planning, the big surprise that I was planning, maybe if you want to go down this rabbit hole, maybe Newland... Newland uh, was was in communication with with Pistorius. I have no information that this is the case. I'm just speculating. What do I know? I'm just some dude with uh, with a camera and and a hoodie walking around uh, Cyprus in a hoodie with a camera. So I have no information uh, whatsoever that this is true. This is just conspiracy theory and speculation. But maybe just maybe Newland was talking to Pistorius and. The big surprise was the blowing up of the Kerch Bridge with Taurus missiles. I don't know. But um, one thing is for sure. Newland was absolutely obsessed with Crimea. The 2014 Maidan coup was all about capturing Crimea. Newland was, was, was obsessed fixated uh, about Crimea. I mean, it was all about Crimea for Newland. So something tells me that the fact that this audio was leaked and that this audio came out exposing the, uh, the plans from uh, the German defense ministry, from Pistorius, about using Taurus missiles to blow up the, the Kerch Bridge, I think for Newland, that was it. That was her surprise, and it was a surprise no more. And she said, okay, it's time to, to resign. Before the real collapse happens, it's time for me to, to bolt. It does make you wonder about Nord Stream and, and how involved was, uh, was Germany or a part of the German deep state with uh, Nord Stream. Did they know anything about it? Because we also have... Newland, before the Nord Stream pipeline was blown up, we also have Newland speaking to the media and basically saying that if Russia invades uh, Ukraine, Nord Stream will no longer function. That's what Newland said about two, three weeks before the special military operation got underway. So it does make you wonder what, what was Newland's relationship with various politicians in Germany or the German deep state and, and what exactly were they were they doing, if anything? I don't know. Once again, this is all speculation and guessing on my part. So let's now talk about Macron. Macron was in Prague meeting with President Pavel and Macron speaking to the media alongside Pavel, he said that 
the European Union, they need to stop being cowards and understand that they are at war. That war is now back in Europe and that Russia and Putin will not stop and the uh, European Union, they have to stop being cowards. That is what Macron said. This is coming from the man who just, uh, just last week was running away from French farmers. And now he is telling the European Union to, uh, to stop being cowards. <laughs> we have the photos of Macron running away from farmers. That was you, Macron. But uh, now, now you're the big tough guy, huh? Speaking on Tuesday to French expatriates in Prague, Macron argued that European nations must step up their support for Kiev in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. We are certainly approaching a moment in our Europe where it will be appropriate not to be a coward, he said. France and Czech Republic are well aware that war is back on our European soul, Macron said. He warned that some powers which have become unstoppable are extending every day their threat of attacking us even more and that we will have to live up to history and the courage that it requires. So Russia's now unstoppable, huh? <laughs> from, from washing machine chips and shovels and running out of weapons to unstoppable. Klitschko yesterday said that Russia was the most powerful military in the world. And now Macron is saying that Russia is unstoppable. My, my, how things have changed. So, you know, uh, Macron, he's the ultimate uh, EU globalist. And for him, it's all about keeping, keeping the fear going, keeping the fear ramped up so that the European Union can, uh, can increase their defense spending, can increase their defense budget as a collective. The entirety of the European Union needs to put together a collective defense uh, spending budget. And as I have said in videos in the past, and as we have uh, talked about on the Duran along with Tom Lungwo, they need this big defense budget so that they can push war bonds or euro bonds and eventually get to EU direct taxation. So Macron, he needs to keep the fear going. And that is why he is talking about the unstoppable Russian army and, and now how the European Union, they need to stop being cowards. And for Macron, that means defense spending. We need to increase the collective EU defense budget, or we need to create a collective EU defense budget. Here is what Von der Crazy tweeted the other day. Today we set our vision for defense readiness with Europe's defense industrial strategy. It will support member states to not only spend more, but better together and European and link Ukraine's know-how with our defense industry to facilitate innovation. So is this a coincidence? Coinky dink? <laughs> I don't think so. Macron is talking about the unstoppable Russia. He's talking about how Europe needs to stop being cowards and start spending more on defense. And uh, Ursula is putting out the plan for a collective EU defense uh, spending budget. Yep, that is what is going on here. And, uh, and by the way, Pavel, he said that he's on board for... Uh, for keeping the, the options open with regards to uh, Europe going to war with Russia. He supports Macron's, uh, Macron's statements that he made the other day, which is to, to keep all options on the table with regards to, uh, to a direct conflict with Russia. So Pavel has come out in support of Macron. And uh, Macron, he supports Pavel's initiative to go around the world and to buy up uh, ammo buy up shells and then deliver those shells to Ukraine or maybe sell those shells to Ukraine because that, that's the plan, I believe, is to, is to buy the shells and they're going to be very, very expensive, believe me. But uh, Europe wants to go around the world, 
buy the shells and then they're going to probably sell the shells <laughs> at a considerable markup to uh to the Alensky regime and uh, this is just all about washing money right the money's just being washed uh, round and round and round but uh, that's that's pavel's plan and, and believe me these shells are going to be super duper expensive but you know they'll they'll take the shells and they'll sell them to ukraine and ukraine will buy the shells using money that that has been given to ukraine by uh by collective west taxpayers really or by money printing so you know that's that's the plan that now macron is supporting all right let's do a couple of more stories and uh then we'll get to our clown world let's see hungary they have come out and they have said that they are not supporting mark rute for the top position at nato because mark rute in the past he said that he wanted to bring hung hungary down to its knees uh rute does not like orban he does not like hungary and uh, he wanted to bring hungary to its knees and uh and now hungary is saying you know what Mark Rutte, we are not going to support you for the top position of uh, NATO. So I guess that means that uh, uh, Kaya Kallis, <laughs> you, you're still in the running, Kaya Kallis. You can still get the job of NATO Secretary General. All of a sudden, it's, it's getting windy. I'm thinking, should I, should I put the mic on? Yeah, let me put the mic on. I'll be back. All of a sudden, it got very windy, so I had to put put on the mic. So let's uh, let's pick up from where I left off. What was I saying? Yeah, Kaya Kalis, she has uh, she has a chance to become the NATO uh, Secretary General now that Hungary is uh, is signaling that they're not going to support Rutte. And yesterday I talked about Haiti and I read an article from The Telegraph and, and I reported on what is happening in Haiti from The Telegraph's point of view. Now I'm going to read you a tweet from journalist and filmmaker Dan Cohen who has been following the developments in Haiti very closely and I am going to read you his perspective on what is happening in Haiti. The U.S. government and its media apparatus are telling you Haiti has a gang problem that demands foreign military intervention. It's true there is a problem with criminal gangs that kidnap, terrorize, and murder innocent people. What they don't tell you is that these criminal gangs are creations of the system supported by the U.S.-backed oligarchs. They also don't tell you that their invasion is targeted against the only figure fighting against those criminal gangs, Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier, leader of the G9 Anti-Crime Federation. Unlike Cherizier, U.S. puppet Ariel Henry is reviled by the people. He can't appear in public, let alone draw a crowd of hundreds of thousands like Cherizier. This is enemy number one of the U.S. empire in Haiti. Anti-imperialists must resist war propaganda promoted through mass media and defend him and Haitian sovereignty. So that is, that is Dan Cohen and his take on what is happening in Haiti and, uh, and his reporting on on the man known as Barbecue, who goes by the nickname of Barbecue, Jimmy Cherizier, leader of the G9 Anti-Crime Federation, and the, the military that is being put together, this police force military that's being put together by the current leader, Ariel Henry, is, uh, is actually, actually meant to target Cherizier because he is the one person that is fighting against the oligarchs and uh, the oligarchs criminal gangs. So a very interesting take from Dan Cohen and uh, it's completely opposite 
of what the Telegraph was reporting yesterday. So uh, who's, who's telling the truth? The Telegraph? Telegraph? Or Dan Cohen? Who do you believe? Anyway, I'll put a link to, to Dan Cohen's uh, Twitter, Twitter profile. He's been covering Haiti very closely. Much better than, than I could ever possibly do. So, uh, so thank you, Dan, for that explanation of what is going on. All right, let's, uh, let's do a clown world and we will wrap this video up. How am I doing on time here? All right. Yeah, let's do a clown world. Look at all the oranges. Okay, so uh, Biden is going to be giving a, a State of the Union on March 7th. I didn't know that. Is it March 7th? Yeah. Biden is going to be speaking for more than five minutes on March 7th. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Anyway, State of the Union. Joe Biden. And uh, the reports are that he invited Yolanda Navalny. Yolanda Navalny has been invited to the State of the Union address. And Biden also invited Olena Zelenska. Yeah, the, the wife of Zelensky. But the reports are that she has declined Biden's State of the Union invitation. Ukraine's first lady declines State of the Union Invitation, the White House had intended for Elena Zelenska to sit near First Lady Jill Biden and Russian opposition figure Yulia Novanaya, who is viewed with some skepticism in Ukraine. Wow. All right. So, Zelensky's wife snubs Biden's invitation. And they're saying it's because Biden has invited Yolanda to the State of the Union. I don't know. I don't buy that. Something tells me that something else is going on here. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the clown world. <laughs> Biden State of the Union. Yolanda Navalny is getting an invite. And Olena Zelenska has turned down Biden's invite. That's the video, everybody. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop, 15% off all t-shirts. Take care. Alexei Navalny's widow, Yulia, was invited to the State of the Union by the White House, um, but she's unable to make it. Did the president extend that invite personally when he met with her so, last month? Yes, I can, I can confirm that she was indeed invited to the State of the Union. She is no longer able to attend. I would have to refer you to her uh, and her people on, as to specifically why, but I can confirm that, yes, did she was invited. Did the president extend that invitation yes, the president did. when they met? Yes, the president did.